This video is all about the Ampeak DC to AC 12 volt, 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And this is not a typical take it out of the box and do a review on it. I've been using this inverter for about three weeks now. I've replaced my old inverter with this one. And there are some things I really like about this inverter I think you might wanna know about. And if you hang with me for just a couple of minutes, I'm gonna provide you with the most detailed review that you're gonna find on this inverter anywhere. Let's start with what's included with your purchase. You'll get your terminal cables, and I'll talk more about these in just a little bit. A 14 millimeter wrench, your user manual, the box, and your inverter. Very briefly, I'm gonna to touch on the wires because it's important to note that these are pure copper wires, and you don't always receive pure copper wires. Sometimes they send you out copper clad aluminum that's acceptable, but it's something that I wouldn't wanna use. I would want pure copper wires like we have right here. Also, they're not sending 24 inch wires out. These are 34 inches from tip to tip and the size of these are 25 millimeter which is equivalent to four gauge wire for a short moment here let me sit down and go over the specifications i've taken some notes because i just want to make this as quick and seamless as possible so this is a 3000 watt inverter that's capable of pushing 3000 watt continuously and it has a peak surge of 6000 watts the dc input rating is 11 volts to 15 volts the output voltage of the AC is 105 to 125 volts. Low battery alarm happens at 10.5 volts. That's plus or minus 0.5 volts. The high battery shutoff was when the voltage spikes is 16 volts, plus or minus 0.5 volts. The USB output current is 3.1 amps. And the working temperature is negative 10 Celsius or 14 Fahrenheit and 40 Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit. The inverter has an efficiency rating of 91%, weighing in at exactly 10 pounds. And the overall dimensions, including the terminal blocks, is roughly 15 and three quarters by seven and a half by four. Now let's take a look at the front of the inverter where all the outlets are. We have the power switch, two 15 amp outlets, and one 20 amp outlet, this is unique. I haven't seen this on many inverters. Most of the time they just give you 15 amp and they have a DC outlet, 12 volt right here. This is your communication port if you wanna hook it to a monitor and you have two USB ports. And if we turn it around, you have your battery terminals, your ground terminal, and your two exhaust fans. Before I go and hook this up to my test station, I wanna go over the 17 different safety protections that comes with this inverter. Other inverters talk about having five, six, or maybe seven. This one has 17 that they list. I can read those off real quick for you, or you can skip to the next chapter in this video. So here goes, low battery voltage, output short circuit, over voltage, inverter overheat, output overload, inverter overcool, VCC power down, DC cigarette lighter overcurrent, battery low voltage alarm, DC cigarette lighter overload, communication error, isolated circuit, inverter over voltage, USB short circuit, reverse polarity, inverter low voltage, output overcurrent. That's a lot. And as I hook this up, this is the first time I'm actually using the cables that come with it because previously I used the cables that I have in my test uh, unit here. But because I'm putting the inverter over on this side so I can showcase it better for you all, I needed to remove my cable and put their cable on. And as I was doing that, I realized this terminal does not have the right size opening for this, not for this inverter. Now for my bus bar, it does. So this has a larger boat that it goes over. This has a smaller boat. If you're hooking this up for a long-term use, then you'd want to make sure that you have the proper size ends on both sides. This would take a little bit larger of an end than this over here does. This needs to be a little bit smaller of a boat. When I put this over here, you'll see that that is too big of a cable for that. On the bus bar, this is the right size. And although I praise Ampeak for sending out pure copper wire, because a lot of these inverter companies do not do that, the ends should be properly sized for the inverter. I do like that they provide this cover that has a cap that actually screws over and keeps it in place. On other inverters, they usually have this little thing it slides into 
and they pop off. They don't really secure themselves that well. So I like that they have that boat to secure that cap. Let's take a quick look at the setup. I have this connected to one of the most capable 12 volt batteries that I have because it has a 200 amp BMS. That's important because if I try to pull more than, let's say 150 amps from this with a battery that only has a 100 amp BMS in it, then the battery would shut down and it wouldn't allow me to test out the inverter correctly. I want at least 200 amps coming out of the battery so I can test the inverter properly. Let's get everything turned on. Something I know everyone's interested in is how much power is this thing using while it's setting idle like it is right now. That's very important because if we have nothing hooked to this and it's turned on waiting for someone to plug something in so they can use an appliance, how much power is it drawing from the battery during that period of time? And here's the answer to that question. 2.4 amps at 13.1 volts gives you right at 30 watts. My next test is to put this inverter under a load so we can get those fans to kick on and see how noisy it is. And to get a more accurate understanding of what that is, we're going to use this sound level meter, which gives me a decimal number that allows me to gauge how loud or how quiet the inverter is. When I'm talking, you can see it probably spikes up uh, into the 70s. And when I'm quiet, it probably falls below 30, which falls into the low range, almost complete silence. So let's get a load under this and find out exactly how quiet or how loud that inverter is. And I'm also going to compare it to the heat gun on the high setting. The fans have kicked on, but I need to turn off the heat gun to get the actual reading. When you're roughly one and a half to two foot away from the fans themselves, you're looking at just at 60 decibels. Next, I have this high powered light that I could test in the USB. Switches on the back. That works great. And although this may not be a practical situation, you can use the DC cigarette lighter to charge your power station, your portable power station. Typically, you would just plug it into the AC outlet and charge that way much faster. But this is the only thing I got to demonstrate that the <laughs> DC cigarette lighter does work. And you can see right here, we have an input of 99, 98 watts. So we can confirm that that works, but there is one thing that annoys me about this. And it's that on the display, it's showing zero watts. The display only displays what's coming out of these uh, 120 volt outlets, not the actual DC outlet for the 12 volt. And this is my favorite test in any video that I do. I always love overloading these inverters or batteries. And by doing that, I could test to see if the fail safes that they got in place actually do work or not. And I'm going to do that by using a heat gun, an old oven, a space heater, and an old sandwich maker. I love it when that happens, when something works like it's supposed to. I suppose the question is now, is would I recommend this inverter after doing all this testing that I've completed over the last couple of weeks? I would recommend this, and really, it depends on your situation of what size inverter you really need and what style of inverter you really need. And this is considered a power inverter. And as long as you understand what you're purchasing, and if the question is, would I recommend this as a power inverter? I definitely would. And if you have any questions on power inverters, hybrid inverters, all-in-one inverters, or batteries, or anything related to solar in general, be sure to check out my forum over at DIYSolarBills.com. And if you've got those questions, be sure to post them to get answers to them. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me to the end of the video. Since you made it all the way here, if I could ask you one little favor, just smash the thumbs up button because it really does help me out a lot if you found anything in this video helpful or entertaining in any way.